we've addressed our elevation challenges at our rainwater sand cistern by building up the soil level between the cistern and our cottage and also building a low retaining wall to hold that soil back. Now we're ready to move the water from the cottage over to the cistern and we start that simply by building, uh, adding guttering to the building and draining it to the east end where our cistern lies. Once we get to the downspout, we have a couple of options that we can use to move the water from the building to the cistern. We can either move it above ground or below ground. Now if we're going to move it below ground, we do that by simply connecting some non-perforated drainage pipe to our downspout and there's a little adapter that we could use for the attachment and we want to bury this below the soil so that it slopes towards the cistern and we want the drain opening to be at the top of our berm not at the bottom of the cistern that way there's room for water to fill. We can also move water on the surface of the soil either by simply uh, digging out a swale and allowing plants to grow in it or by building a dry creek bed, which is what we're going to do. And we want to start our dry creek bed by identifying the shape of it. And I'm using a hoe just to dig out the shape I want to follow. If you have a large area, I often use a garden hose and lay that along the soil. I do this a lot when I'm shaping beds and such so that I could get the shape properly. Now, if you think about a natural creek, they have curves and bends, and our dry creek is gonna look much more at home in the landscape if we give it a few curves rather than running it straight. The next thing we wanna do is just to start digging out our dry creek bed. And creeks typically aren't very deep. They're wider than they're deep. And a good rule of thumb to use is to dig your dry creek bed so that it's two times wider than it, has, than it is deep. And so to get the depth, but also to start building up the edges of our dry creek, I'm simply pulling the soil out from inside the creek and building up the edge. As you size your dry creek bed, you want it to be proportional to the surrounding landscape and also the length of the creek bed. A really long skinny channel isn't going to look very natural. You also want to size it to accommodate the flow of water, which we have a pretty limited source from the bottom of a gutter. We don't have that much water flowing through. So this uh, pretty narrow width should be adequate. Now the end of it, I've widened a little bit. If you think about the mouth of a river, they tend to open up as they flow into a lake or a pond and so we've widened the end of it a little bit. One thing you have to be sure of is that you maintain a nice gentle slope flowing downhill toward the cistern. Now dry creek beds have many different purposes in the landscape and ours is used to move water but we can also use them to control erosion along a slope where water falls down a steep slope or simply for decorative purposes. We have a beautiful dry creek bed that we built in our bridge garden simply for aesthetic purposes. And once we get our creek bed dug, we want to tamp the soil some just to settle it a bit. This can help you if you're not sure about the slope, you could tamp it and then just run a garden hose in here and see if the water drains out. Once we get the soil settled, we're ready to put in a liner. And if you're building a dry creek bed just for aesthetic purposes, you can use a weed mat as your liner. But because we're trying to maximize the capture of water into our cistern, I'm using a plastic liner and I'm just using a scrap that was left over from building our cistern. You want to lay the liner across the bottom of your channel and also up the sides. You can use some landscape pins to secure it in place or set a few boulders along the edges. We're going to end up having a lot of rock along the edge to keep it in place. The next thing I want to do is attach a downspout extender. And this is just going to make sure that the water moves from our downspout into our dry creek. And as we work, we're going to hide this with some of the rock that we build up along our creek bed. 
Well, now we're ready to start filling it, and I'm gonna use river rock along the bottom of our channel. The water's gonna flow over the river rock towards the mouth of our dry creek and into the cistern. And at this point, we need to use some of our larger stones to hold back the gravel, but we wanna also leave some large openings where the water can flow through. So this is maybe the more challenging part, uh, but it's gonna give it a beautiful aesthetic feel. We're also gonna use some of our larger stone to start building up along the edges and finish off our creek.